Good morning, everyone. As always, place your cross on first. No matter what you're going through, no matter what day it is, keep that cross on. The enemy stay out. Morning, noon, and night, he's lurking. He give no sleep to his eyelids. You understand? Keep your cross on. Put that arm on, which is the word of God as part of it. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, I thank you for waking me up this morning. I thank you for giving me another chance to get it right, another chance to spread your word. As you to use me as you seem fit, to teach the word exactly how you want me to. Send the Holy Spirit, the comforter, to help me, to guide my words, to guide my path throughout this day, and to guide my steps. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yesterday I did a video on the parable of the sower and the seed, tares and the wheat. But I'm going to continue on. I read the one in Matthew yesterday. I read the parable about the sower and the seed from Matthew chapter 12 and 13. I talked about the sower and the seed. Now you go over to Mark. They got the sower and the seed too. But the words may little change a little bit. Let me tell you something about word of mouth. If it's true, it's going to stay accurate to an extent. That's how the Matthew, Mark, Luke, John are written. From different eye perspectives, they're hearing the same thing. You understand? That's why the Bible is so. That's why the Bible has Matthew, Mark, Luke, John to give different witness accounts of the same thing from different points of views. But it's all come down to the same exact thing. That's why the Word of God is so powerful because it's it clarifies itself. You understand? It strengthens itself. There's no other book out there that does this. You understand? So I'm going to start from Mark chapter 4 today. And he began to teach by the sea side, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables, and said unto them, In his doctrine, hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass that he sowed some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And others fell on good ground, and did yield fruit that sprang up, increased, and brought forth some thirty, and some sixty, and some a hundredfold. And he said to them, He that hath ears, let him hear. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. And he said to them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but it to them that are without. All these things are done in parables. That seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. Did you hear what he said? They won't hear unless their sins can be converted. If they hear the word and receive it, that's where the forgiveness of sons, sins come into play. But if they hear it and don't receive it and don't live by it, or try to anyway, it's null and void. And he said to them, Know ye not this parable, how then will you know all parables? That's a bold statement that Jesus put there. If you don't understand this parable, how will you know all parables? You won't. That's crazy. But I, I'm starting to understand some things in regards to the word of God. Everything that's said in here is said for a purpose. God wants you to understand certain things even more so. The soul and the seed. If you don't know it, meditate on it, read it over and over again. I guarantee you'll get the answer. The sower soweth the word. Now, if you go to Matthew, Matthew, Matthew he said the sower soweth the word. And the sower is who? The son of God, Jesus. And the people who work with him, who sow the word to his disciples, his people. You understand? If you um, if you go back and read the uh, look at the video I did yesterday, it's going to go more in, in depth in that part. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and take away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness and have no root of themselves, and so endure but for a time. After when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. You got to think about it. Persecution. You're getting persecuted by the word's sake. So who's there again? Satan. 
the first time is Satan there blocking it from even hearing your head. Then the second time, after certain things go wrong, the, the persecutor, Satan, is persecuting you as a Christian. He's persecuting the word. And then people get back up. You understand? That's why God says study to show yourself approved. You fight the persecution with the word. You fight the devil with the word. So if you go out there and about and uh, tribulation and all this stuff come and you fall away from the word, guess what? You're giving the, the enemy the win. But you use the word to defeat the enemy. If you read when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness for the days and for the nights, he used what to fight against the devil? The word of God. You see, that's what the devil wants to do. Take the word from you. I want you to focus on your own opinion, what you think you believe. And he'll catch you in your own craftiness. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, when in the other things that Satan was offered to Jesus. Riches. If you bow down and worship me, all these things I give to you. That's why he said the deceitfulness of riches comes in. And the lust of things enticing, entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. Now, if you read both of these chapters parallel, you're going to see the differences, but you're going to see the same. One just a little shorter version. And then they, give even, they even give different parables with it, but it's the same parable, the same basic concept. And he said to them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed, not to be set on a candlestick? For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested. Neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. The word of God. He said, basically, don't hide the word. You know, God had me talk about this all the time. You don't light a candle and put it out. You light a candle so the light can shine. You don't use the word just to set it under you put it on your nightstand and just let it sit there under the nightstand. You put it somewhere so you can see the word and spread the word. That's how it works. You don't hide the word. The word is not made to be hid. You see, that's what Satan wants you to do. So if you take the word away from you, if you stop utilizing, you drop your armor. And he said unto them, take heed what you hear. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you. And to you that hear shall be more given. To you that hear, more shall be given. The word of God. The more you hear the word, the more it's going to be given to you. God's going to bring all kind of things as a remembrance of you. For he that hath to him shall be given. And he that hath not from him shall be taken even that which he hath. In regards to the word. I'm going to say the word. I'm not going to even focus on mere material things. I'm talking about the word of God. And he says, so is the kingdom of God. As if a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep, and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up, he knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fr fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. You see, this is a shorter version of what God led me to talk about yesterday. You understand? The sowing the seed is a great teaching tool to use in regards to the word of God. You understand? Now let me continue on this day. Let's see what God has to say today using me. Let's see. Let's see. You know what I'm saying? Um, God is a good father. He's trying to tell you to stay grounded in the word. Whether you want to believe it or not. You know the sow and the seed is like I told, this is how I broke it down. This is how I see it. You got stages in your life as a Christian. You got stages when God is trying to, let's put it this way, God is a forgiving and a merciful God. So look at the four stages as God always trying to reach you. The first stage, God is trying to reach you through the word of God, but Satan blocking it, right? The second stage, God has finally reached you. You understand? Other soldiers said this. He's finally reached you. You hear the word with gladness, but when you go away, you forget about it. But God is still trying to reach you. Sometimes you'll stay on that first stage for a long time. And the thing is, most Christians who weren't baptized or raised in the church right off the back, you understand? Most of them, and that's even me, I was raised in the church. But at the same time, I didn't really understand the word. I knew we went to church. I knew I read about, learned about the Bible. But I wasn't really understanding anything. I just knew it was church and I knew my mom made me go every Sunday. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for that. You understand? 
And but at the same time, when I got older, I knew God. I did. But I only called upon him in times of trouble. I never thought, thought thanked him that much or nothing like that. But you know, he said it reached out for you. But let me get, uh, explain again. The first stage, the devil's blocking you from hearing the word of God. Through what? Through your lust. Through everything that's trying to fight against you. You understand? He blocking it. He blocking the word. You can't even hear the word yet because the devil stay in your ear. He's stopping the word from even reaching you. You ever talk to about God with some people and they just walk away instantly? Think about that in regards to the first stage of the soul and the seed. The word is not penetrating through their skulls. You understand? But the thing is, this is the thing. You remember when God sent the disciples out, right? He said, whatever house receive you, let your peace come upon you. If they don't, leave. Dust your foot off of that doorstep. Now, people are like, that's messed up, so God has given up. No, he got many people in the harvest. He got many laborers in the harvest. That's just what that laborer's uh, task for that day. Say, the, say what you need to say and go on. God never stops sending laborers in the harvest. You got to understand this. You see, you got to understand something. God is constantly trying to reach every soul on this earth. Think about it as you're walking as a Christian. I think about it as mine. So many people have came to me over the years before I gave my life to Christ, trying to tell me about Christ. And I couldn't hear it. I couldn't hear it. I didn't want to hear it. You understand? Just like the disciples who like, move on to the next. Move on to the next city. Move on to the next house. You don't have to spend all your time trying to focus on one person. Trying to focus on one group. You understand? Because get what? God has more people in the harvest than you think. He's going to always send somebody somewhere. Right? Because go to the second stage. Let's go to the second stage now. They hear the word with gladness. They receive it with gladness. They happy to hear it. But then when they leave, it's like, it's not soaking in all the way. They're more, they're more caught up in the, the world. He said when trials and persecution come in regards to the word, they fall away. They fall away. You understand? This is the devil still trying to block you. That might, that's why God said, be not unequally yoked with non-believers. You got to think of everything from a spiritual perspective, from a physical perspective. You got to look at things in so many different ways in regards to the Bible to truly understand what God is trying to do. God is trying to reach them too constantly. He said they endure for a while. But the thing is, and then they come back. Do you understand? Because somebody is always in the harvest. The word is not going to return void to those that want it. You understand? So the second stage is a good stage to be on. To know the word. Receive it with gladness and joy. It is. It ain't going to lie to you. Every stage is a good stage. The first stage is the worst stage. When God's trying to reach and you can't hear. The second stage is when God actually got your attention. But the world has more of your attention. You understand? The world has more of its attention. Trials and tribulations come up and you fall away. You forget about the word. You try to take things into your own hands, this and that. But you still know God. But the enemy is trying to keep you from getting to know God on a very personal level. Now, the third stage. Now, think about this. This is the, I talked about this yesterday. The third stage is one of the hardest stages to get stuck in. He's at the third stage, right? They hear the word. But then the deceitfulness of riches and the cares of this world choke the word up. Just think about this. God says, Jesus says, be not friends with the world. Right? You can't love the world and God. You can't serve God and mammon. It's kind of weird that he put deceitfulness of riches in the third stage with the tares. You see, the tares are people that know the word. But the word is being mingled. It's being mingled with, you ever heard of prosperity preaching? It's tares in the wheat, whether people believe it or not. And get, if you if you go to the video that I put yesterday, God's gonna let the tares grow with the good. He's gonna let the tares grow with the good. He's gonna let the people do what they want to do, right until the end of harvest. The end of harvest. Now, the fourth stage. This is the stage that every Christian is aiming for. The stage when you know the word, you hear the word. And it's time for that word to start bearing fruit. Now you're the good seed. Now God has spread that good seed in you. It is soaked in. You understand it. You spread it. And it's going to bear fruit. And the thing is, it's going to bear fruit. But guess what? 
He already told you about the tares. But the thing is, the good seed can just keep going. They're not going to give up. They're not going to stop. I told you about the story yesterday about the man, the good man who sold good seed, right? He sold good seed. And his, um, the enemy came while he was sleeping and, and sowed tares among the seed, right, in the harvest. And the, they asked him. They was like, oh, want us to rip the tares up? He's like, no. It's cool. It's cool. Wait till it come full of harvest. You understand? And then we'll tear, we'll, we'll collect all of it together. And the good is going to be kept into the storehouse. And the bad is going to be burned. Do you understand what I'm saying? The word is then soaked in you so bad you ain't worried about the tears. You understand? But the tears are still deadly. You see, he said, be careful how you hear, right? Some people that spread the word of God are not spreading good seed. It's not for me to figure it out. It's not for me to understand or judge them. But it is what it is. If the Bible talks about tares in the wheat, there are tares in the wheat. There are people who are sowing the word that are not sowing in it properly. You understand? The thing is, that's why God says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. If you study the word, your goal is to understand the word. He said, understand it. Go back to the video that I did yesterday. Understand it. They understand it. So it don't matter. Tears, the enemy, nothing can take the word from you. Paul summed it up, neither life nor death will separate me from the love of God. Now, you're at a stage now where you don't care what happens. You don't care if you live or die. He said, I'd rather leave and go home to my father. But being here is more useful. You understand? Because he still got work to do. He'd rather stay in this evil world spreading the word than to go home just yet. You understand? He, want, he got work to do. He realized the importance of the word of God and the importance of him staying grounded in it. The importance of him spreading more seed to produce more fruit. You understand? You know, like most Christians... We say this. We're like, well, I can't wait to go home. But it's like a, I'm going to be real with you. We can't wait to go home. But at the same time, we still feel like it's work to do. That's crazy. You love, you ready to go to heaven. But you rather stay back and spread the word some more. That's good fruit. That's good seed. You understand? Think about it. It makes perfect sense. But if you read the, uh, the other parable of sowing the seed, you understand? He's talking about unbelief and all these things. You understand? Unbelief. He said something key. He said most people don't receive the word lest they be converted from their sins. So to, to, he said to some, the word is evil spoken of. You understand? Those those who don't really want to accept the word. They don't want to receive it so they can be delivered from their sin. They're stagnant. You understand? They're not moving forward. They're not trying to let the, the word do what it do because they are against the word because it's against some of their personal habits, their traditions, their lust. You see, the enemy feeds off your lust. You understand? God comes in and gets, uses the word to change you, to make you understand. Then he sent the Holy Spirit to comfort you and to teach you even more so. One thing about the word of God is don't really talk a lot about the spiritual but Paul talks about spiritual growth also. Those who are spiritual. You see, I told you, for a lot of time, I used to say, I'm spiritual. And I still consider myself spiritual. But I'd rather say Christian because it lets people know that I'm a follower of Christ. I'm still spiritual, but I'm a Christian also. You understand? But as you grow, a lot of things, gonna you're going to start understanding things a little bit differently but everybody goes through these stages everybody goes through these stages and the thing is sometimes you bounce back from stage one to stage three let's say somebody reaches stage three and the deceitfulness of riches and the cares of this world choke the word up sometimes god may let you stay that way sometimes god will take away from you right he said to whom much is given much is required so, if you're you, sometimes God will start taking the word, taking things from you to bring you back down to a level so he can teach you again. Do you understand? To teach you again. 
to show you the deceitfulness in it. Trial and error, I tell everybody all the time. Something about, like, I tell people, like, man, when do you get it right? Well, being a Christian is on-the-job training. You learn as you go. You never stop learning. As long as you live in this earth, you never stop learning. You're never going to come to the complete truth because God doesn't want you to know the complete truth. God wants you to know exactly what he wants you to know. He don't want you to be God. You're never going to reach a level when you are God and you know everything. Nobody is. Pride. The pride of life. You understand? The seafulness of riches. There's a lot of things that can choke the word up. The cares of this world really can. You understand? The Bible says so many things. Don't worry about nothing. I got you. All we got to do as Christians is spread the word. Now, this is what happens to a lot of us Christians. I'm just, I got to base it off my walk. And I'm sure a lot of Christians can relate to this. We'll spend so much time focused on the same people. On the same people. Stressing ourselves out. Worrying ourselves to death. But we, we got to start realizing something as a Christian. The word is going to do what it do. It's going to reach who it's supposed to reach. I talked about yesterday the great divide. Some people are not going to want to hear it. And some people are going to receive it with joy. And some people are going to soak it in. But some people are not going to hear the word. When Jesus or some people are going to hear it and construe it. Jesus talked about the end of days. The harvest when the angels come and take up the good and do away with the bad. You understand? That's heaven and hell preaching. People don't think Jesus preached heaven and hell. He did. He preached the forgiveness of sin, but he also preached heaven and hell. You know, that's love. But yesterday, God uh, put on my mind to start a simple test. I'm not finished with it yet, but it's a simple test. It's a simple test. I'm going to touch base on it just a little bit here. People love to hear good news from God. Now, I'm not, all the word of God is a good news to me. All the word of God is good news to me. You understand? But everybody wants to hear something good. You got to understand what I'm saying by something good. Like, hey, you got money coming. You finna get out of debt. You understand? You got to find you a husband. You got to find you a wife. People love to hear those things. And I'm just leaving it right there because I'm not finished with the text yet. People love to hear that part. They love to hear that part. He said you can't leave the, left, the rest unturned. Jesus talked about the new and the old. You can't spread one part and not the other part. Because if it's not, you're misleading people by not letting them know the full truth. Nobody wants to hear half of a story, right? You ever come and watch a movie and start off an hour within the movie and you only got 45 minutes left? It's just not the same. You just see 45 minutes of the movie. You don't know nothing else about it. It's just not the same when you don't see the whole movie. And the Bible is not the same if you don't focus on the whole Bible. You understand? If you don't see the whole Bible, you don't see the whole perspective of God. You're not going to see it all the way, but you're going to see a little bit of what God wants to show you through his word. I tell people all the time, the word is like a, bi a guidebook. Somebody summed it up. He's like, um, basic instructions before leaving earth. I love that. That's the, he, abbrevi he abbreviated the Bible into that. B, basic. I, instructions. B, before. L, leaving earth. Basic instructions before leaving earth. It's to keep you on the right path. You understand? Basic instructions. God is not going to tell you all, but he gave you the guidelines to go by. The sower and the seed, the song of Solomon, all of it. Moses' story, David's story, Esther's story, Ruth's story, Samson's story, Paul's story. All of them serve a purpose. You understand? But what's going on now is the word is being watered down. You see, the most deadly stage to me. Now, I, I can't speak for everybody else. I'm saying it to me. The tears. It's the most deadly stage. You know, getting to that third stage and getting high-minded and start losing track on what the Word of God is all about. 
Now, in so many ways, like some people are focused on this part. Some people are focused on this part. Like I said, you got some people that focus on nothing about the grace. They focus on nothing but the grace and the mercy of God. They don't talk about the other side. The side, the God that punishes. The God that makes people inherit a curse for following away from. People don't focus on that much. That much. They focus on God's grace and God's mercy. Which goes back to the question. I mean, the, the test I said God set on my mind to do. God is about to prosper. God is doing good things for you. God is going to lead you. Look, Abraham. Go to a place that I will show you. You know what I'm saying? I leave your father's house. And I'm going to take you to a place flowing with milk and honey. Everybody loves that. Everybody loves that part. He's going to lead me to a place flowing with milk and honey. He's going to lead me to the promised land. Now let's fast forward to the future. Let's fast forward to the future. Joshua, I mean, uh, the, the word of God has came to pass. You understand, Joseph then led the people to Egypt and the people are calling on God. And God is wanting to lead them to the promised land. What happened on the way to the promised land? People leave this part out. What happened on the way to the promised land? Why did they circle in the wilderness for 40 days? I mean, 40 years. Uh, complaining. Murmuring. Doubting. Some people didn't inherit the promised land. Some people didn't enter the promise because of what? Disobedience. People don't like to talk about what happens when you're disobedient to God. People that say the promised land, but they don't want to talk about the rest. Let me pause for a second and continue.